promises that the most vulnerable are being protected, inevitably it is them that will be the hardest hit by these cuts, by the closure of libraries, of council advice services, by the removal of the very last amenities that exist on some working class estates in this city, by the charging of more for dementia care, the removal of subsidy for AIDS uh, charities. The cuts that are being proposed here are too numerous to mention and we don't even know the half of it yet. But I'm not here to talk just about how bad this is going to be. I'm here to talk about how we can fight and how we can win and we can save our services. On Tuesday, councillors in this building will have the opportunity to do just that. They can uh, decide which side are they on. Will they vote to further decimate services in this city? Or will they stand with the people of Bristol and reject the £100 million cuts budget. That is the option we demand. That is the option they must take if the city is going to be able to continue providing these services. Services which are not luxuries, but are the building blocks of a civilised society in the 21st century. And are we right to place this demand upon the councillors and upon the mayor. Some people would ask that question. Some people would say, these are Tory cuts, they come from the government and there's nothing the council can do. Well yes, we would agree, these are Tory cuts. The question then is why are the Labour Party carrying them out? Campaigning only to point the finger of blame on these cuts will not help anyone. We must have a campaign that can stop them. That's exactly what Baddaka, the Bristol and District Anti-Cuts Alliance, was set up to do. We oppose all cuts, no matter where they come from. As an organisation, we're not anti-Labour, we're anti-cuts. And we'll fight them, as we say, wherever they come from. But if we put more pressure or ask more of the Labour Party, it's for this reason. We expect more of them. Under uh, an anti-austerity leader, Jeremy Corbyn, Politics has been shaken up in this country, but that must be reflected by our councillors, by our mayor, and by the real policies at a local level. Talk is cheap. What matters is actions, and the actions of this council will not make the city a more equal place. It will make the city a harder place to live for working class people. Councils like ours should become, under Corbyn, a bastions of resistance against the Tory government, not accomplices in their war against the working class. I believe it was that hope that saw Marvin Rees elected less than a year ago amid promises of a more equal city. And yet, less than a year later, we're getting some of the same cuts as we had from Ferguson. And we're getting all the same excuses. There's nothing they can do. They don't like it. It's not their fault. Bigger boys made them do it. It's tough decisions that they don't want to take, but they have to. Well, I tell you what. I am sick and tired of hearing politicians talk about the tough decisions they have to make when those decisions are tough on us and not on them. If they have to take a tough decision, it should be the decision to risk their own careers and put the people of this city first instead. Councillors do have a choice. They do have the power to stand up to the Tory government. By the use of council reserves and of borrowing powers, they can write a budget that is legal but contains no cuts. A budget that protects the services in this city and gives time for a mass campaign to be built, a campaign that demands of the Tories they return to this and to other cities the funding which they have slashed and which they have stolen. We didn't win these services in the first place simply by asking nicely for them. We won them through struggle and that is how they must be defended. It's always been this way. If we limited ourselves only to what the rich and their representatives said they could afford, we wouldn't have council services. We would have our children down pits and up, uh, up pits, no bollocks, down pits and up mines. It's a great line when I get it right, but I've kind of fluffed it there. In any case, every single advance that our class has made has been through standing together and struggling for what we need. That is what we must do today. And we can win this fight. We can win this. This is, in my living memory, the weakest, the most divided government I have ever been seen. They can be built in. And it's that kind of campaign that we are building. 
with the trade unions, with service users, with ordinary people across this city and linking up across the country to beat austerity. It would be much stronger if we had the support of our mayor and our councillors. But if we have to do it in the face of their opposition, then so be it. We will not roll over. We will not accept the destruction of our services by a government hell-bent on transferring power and wealth from our pockets and from our hands to their mates in big business and the super rich. That is the logic that demands these cuts. It's their backers in big business that are saying that they must make more profit from the care services, from the running of libraries or education. And it is us that must stand in their way and defend what is ours. This is a beginning to that campaign for this round of cuts. If, and I suspect it might, if the budget is voted through on Tuesday night, that will not be the end. We will fight alongside those people in the communities around Bristol, the workers and the users of these services who are standing and fighting street by street to defend what they need. And the Bristol and District Anti-Cuts Alliance will take that fight with them. Every step and every inch of the way, we will be there. We will link those campaigns together into one mighty voice that says no more cuts. Whether they come from Labour or from the Tories, we will stand up. We will fight back and we can win. Thank you. Yay! Yay! Thanks, Tom. That's great. Uh, can I just appeal to anybody?